As usual, it's me, your host, Amy from Penventure, and welcome to the channel again. In this video, you may have a few cringy moments, but bear with me, and I want to show you something very interesting about how to take care of your writing instruments. Well, to be honest with you guys, it's been a few months since I was thinking about making this video, but I just postponed it and, uh, well, the time is here. In this video, I'm going to show you a few of my tricks, tips, and things that I uh, developed in my years of taking care or at least tinkering with my font pens. I think you guys may see a few things you may learn a few things about phantom pants and also you can develop your own spin based on the things I'm going to show you guys. I don't know even where to start, but I'm going to start and I'm going to show you a few things that I use in order to adjust nibs. First of all, the most trusty tool that you will need is this one right here. This is my loop and this is what I use in order to adjust font pen. So this is probably the most basic tool that you will need. It is a gift from a friend of mine. We have a 30X and a 60X magnifying glass, a small LED light. This is what I personally use in order to adjust font pens and to check the alignment of the time. So this is the most basic stuff that you need to adjust your nib. Then moving forward, I'm going to show you something that you maybe expect or not. Take a look at my fingernails. You've seen in a few videos that my fingernails look chipped, inked and uh, like this because I use the fingernails in order to adjust nibs. You need to develop a certain technique, for example, something like this and you can use your fingernail to adjust the tines of your nib or to adjust the flow without getting damage to the actual nib. They will not scratch your nib. For example, this is a, I don't know, technique or call it whatever you like because I don't even know how to call them. This is what I've learned myself watching others or at least trying and finding a way to do it myself. So this is how I use my nails in order to adjust the tines and to bring the tines a little bit higher. This is another procedure that I use in order to increase the flow. So you get one fingernail under the shoulder of the nib, this one right here like so, and you actually spread the tines trying to create a much more larger gap in between those two tines. You increase the distance between the tines and the flow is a little bit more wet. I wouldn't call them uh, very professional techniques, but I don't know how other people do it. This is how I personally learned to do it myself. I don't know. Use this technique at your own expense or risk because you may damage your nib in the process. I'm not going to be responsible for that. Anyway, this is how I do it without uh, having the risk of uh, using something sharp, something metallic, which I don't advise you to do because uh, let's just say that I did that and I've scratched a few nibs my own. Another thing that is basic and you will need is a rubber pad. And uh, this is nothing, something fancy or anything like this. This is what I did myself. I took a inner tube from a bicycle tire and I cut out a pad. And this is what I use in order to have a better grip, not only with nibs, but with fountain pads in general, because you may not be able to use something like a plier or anything like this. You can scratch the font pens. For example, you can use this uh, if you don't have any grip on your piston to open it like this. But most important, you can use this in order to remove friction fitted nibs. This is how a Momento Grande Pura Leonardo uh, will have the nib set up with the ebonite feed. You will need to grip with the rubber pad like this. You place a finger under the nib like so and one above and you just 
pull like this with both hands in opposite direction. So you can remove the nib very easy without getting the nib damaged or crooked or bend the nib in the process. This is very, very helpful. It is very easy to get a hold of. What else? You will need some brass shims and this is very thin. It's made out of brass and you can use this in order to uh, flush the tines of uh, your nib if you have any residue in that slit and in the channel of the feed you can uh, push those uh, debris off and you can open the flow of your fountain pen. Hmm, I don't know. Let's see. What else? What else? I have some abrasive paper, but I don't know how to go with this. I want to show you how I adjust certain problems regarding the tipping of the nib and to make it more smooth or with a hint of a feedback. And this is some abrasive paper, nothing fancy. I bought this uh, over eBay and I've stapled together in uh, a certain order the abrasive papers. First one, which is this one right here, cuts the most. So this is very, very rough. This is what I use in the first place. Then we have a, I think it's a 4,000, yeah, a 4,000 grid paper. And this is a little bit more smoother. So yet again, abrasive, but more smoother. Then we have a 6,000, smoother and smoother and smoother down to 12,000, which is used in order to make the tipping uh, much more uh, shiny or at least very, very smooth. This is what I use. Be very careful when using pads like this on a hard surface like this table. Let's just say that when you try to adjust this, if you don't have experience, and let me say that even I have problems like this, and sometimes I do make some nips damage that's irreversible because I have a few informations, I have knowledge, I have a certain skill, but from time to time, even I have been doing mistakes with nibs. So be very careful because if you have a hard surface uh, behind these uh, pads, you can actually go forward, polish the nib. You may try to remove something like baby's bottom and you actually grind a little bit more than what's necessary and you form a foot. That means that you form a certain area of the nib and from then the nib is going to write only in that sweet spot. No matter how you turn it a little bit to the left or to the right, it will start to be scratchy. That is a foot. So you don't want to do that and you want to avoid that. I want to show you a different way, which is much more forgiving to adjust nibs. Here is where we have this pads. So these pads are ordered from eBay. Again, you can find them very easy. And what's very interesting about them is the fact that they have a rubber padding in between two abrasive papers. For example, if you push down with the nib tipping like so, you actually find that you have a little bit of give and you don't have a hard surface that can form that foot. So this will help you a little bit more. This is something which is much more forgiving due to the padding in between those two abrasive papers. And it is something that I recommend you in the first place to use. If you don't have experience, start with this. Possibly we will make a video entirely dedicated to how you are going to correct nibs with abrasive paper. And now that you've seen some of the tools that I used in order to adjust nibs, I would like to put everything that you've seen into context with PenVenture. Every single font pen that leaves the inventory is checked by myself. From the checked font pens, some need adjustments, some don't. I do this for each and every single pen. I check everything because I want to make sure that whenever you have the font pen in front of you, you order a font pen from PenVenture and you have a big smile, you open the box, you see the font pen inside and you put it to the paper. I want you to have the same smile, if not even bigger. I want that nib to perform perfect. And this is how I envisioned this in regards of PenVenture. I'm gonna take the font pen, remove it from the box. I'm gonna check to see if the correct nib size is on that font pen. Start to go forward with the checklist. First of all, I'm gonna check the piston. I will do something like this. 
let's say if the piston works just fine i'm gonna leave it like so and i'm gonna move forward i'm gonna watch every single uh, aspect of the trim to have uh, the front pen not be scratched damaged dropped or anything like this so if it is i'm going to remove it and uh, i'm going to talk with the manufacturer moving forward i will take a closer look with the loop to the actual nib tipping and i'm going to adjust the tipping if it needs so going to watch to see if the ink flow is okay and let's just say everything is okay till this point now i would take a little bit of ink and I use black ink so I have here a bottle of uh, black Visconti ink don't ask me where but I'm sure I, it's right here I have another bottle of Leonardo black ink so this is what I used in order to test fountain pens I would take the fountain pen I would dip it in ink not draw ink into the piston filling mechanism and I'm gonna put the nib to the paper if it writes okay then it will get washed cleaned and it will be put in the box and picked up by DHL and had your way let's just say I'm not happy with the way uh, the fountain pen is writing so I would go forward and check adjust the nib open if the flow is not what i like or what the client mentioned again another high point of this is that you guys have the possibility of leaving notes in regards of how would you like the nib to be adjusted if the order has notes in regards of how the nib should write i will go forward and uh, i will adjust the font pen according to those specifications i'm going to try to correct if it has certain problems regarding uh, the tipping with the abrasive paper from then i will proceed cleaning the fountain pen in the process maybe there will be some ink residue left into the feed or it will travel into the feed and end up in the piston filling mechanism be sure that the fun van that you order from pen venture is new whatever fun vans that are pre-owned and they are sold through pen venture on our consignment section into the description of that font pen you will find the notes that will tell you if the font pen was used and all other details that is kind of it i would like to end in something very funny I'm gonna show you how I removed the last droplet of ink without uh, actually getting water into the piston. So let's just say this is a fountain pen that I've put some ink in it. Now I've adjusted it and I want to uh, expel the last droplet of ink. I would take a paper towel like this one. I'm gonna put the nib like so. I wanna close everything like so and be very careful don't try this at home kids because it can end up in a flying pan which is equivalent with a dart you may damage the nib in the process and uh, i'm hoping that there is no other on the receiving end of a flying uh, pan with the nib first watch this so this is what i do like so in order to create centrifugal force and to expel ink into the paper the paper towel once i do that i will put the cap like so and put the fun pen into the box so kids don't try this at home this is how i learned myself to do it i'm pretty sure some of you guys are very very cringy at this moment and you should be because this is how i do it i hope i did not upset any fun pen lover I do love fountain pens myself, I do respect them, I do have my own way of treating them, I'm paying for my mistakes if I do mistakes, that is how I learned to do it. For now I think this is how much I want to share with you guys in regards of uh, tips, tricks uh, and uh, some of the tools that I use in order to address certain problems regarding fountain pens. If you need any information, if you have any questions, leave them into the comment section down below and I will be more than happy to respond to all of your questions. Maybe in the process I will learn myself a few new things and uh, be sure that uh, it's going to be a fun, fun conversation into the comment section. Again, if you want to support me doing videos like this don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it if you are not subscribed to the pen venture youtube channel you can do that right now click here and turn the notification bell on if you want to see more quality content from pen venture and myself why not 
click on this video right here. My name is Emmy, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe, stay strong. Bye-bye.